uh, the thing uh, that's interesting about him too is I've met Paul and he's very unassuming and he's a little bit uh, inhibited or goofy a little. I would never in a trillion years guess that he made these movies. It's right. nuts. It's sort of right. the same kid because he's an L.A. guy. Also, I just L.A. sounds a certain way to my ear. Uh, but Jesus Christ. Usually, usually I think he, he writes beyond his own intellect. That's inc- that's almost impossible. Part of uh, being an artist is you get fed up with yourself. So you just go, fuck it, I might as well really talk. Right, um, right. The comic rhythm. And you start getting actually funny and getting the need to crush the need to crush. And I think getting back to our subject that's happened in some degree with this filmmaker, because he started with the the heartache, just going like, here's where, here's how my voice sounds. Here's how I look at things. Here's how I film stuff. Here's how I use music and cutting. And here's, and, and what he had underneath that grew and grew over time was the ability to have actors live, with a really sad, just a tragic sadness and to see the value in actors that weren't exactly kicking ass in other areas yet. Uh, and then Boogie Nights was his, like, I'm in Hollywood and I got Marky Mark and I got Burt Reynolds and I'm going to make this John Holmes movie. And it, the whole second half is going to be so dark and violent and it's going to be a mess, man. And the first half of it is just beautiful to me. And it's just my feeling. Yeah. Second half, I just didn't care about but I knew I was watching a guy who's extremely special and and learning. But it he only got richer and richer and richer after that. Oh, there will be blood is him maturing to being a lot more honest, beating the guy to death with the fucking thing, and then saying I'm finished um, is just upsetting and it's unresolved and it's disturbing and it's. Uh, disappointing it's and all of those are valid emotions to feel at the end of a movie can't tell a story about a guy like that and have it have any other ending you could sit here right now and try to write 50 endings to there will be blood and they'll stink for me watching that movie was um like having this fucking uh, warm chocolate just fed into my throat i'm constantly lost in thought about that movie anytime it comes up i just walk down the street and think about it that's what a movie should do. It shouldn't. It shouldn't achieve its goals. It shouldn't. A, a great movie to me is all tattered ends, like an arm was torn off, and it's just blood, blood in the wind. Somebody who's got more. You could. You could never reach to the end of his wealth ever, ever. That's the way it feels. He's got a fucking bowling alley in his house. I think there's also this absurdity that the world around him has these things like bowling and milkshakes, and that he's just a guy with whiskey, and once in a while. They bring him a milkshake. He doesn't even know. He's never been to a, a, a place that serves milkshakes. He doesn't know any. He's, he's an animal. He's not in control of wanting anything. He's just pure drive. He, he just sags under the weight of, every, of everything that he accumulates. And he has this desperate desire to have himself carry on in another person. Big fucked up animal. And the, so the that the, the the dryness of his feelings at the end and like the the there's a horrible, desperate look into the void of humanity that I think is very emotional. It's not emotionally, it doesn't have those sunny emotions. It doesn't have the primary color emotions. It's on another level. It's a different, it's a different, uh, and it's, and it's, and it's those strange um, alloyed emotions. It's not gold or zinc, it's brass or something. It's a really fucked up strange thing that he created in that movie. I've never seen it repeated. I've seen a thousand movies that make me feel like all right, and I know those feelings, and I'm happy to have them again every time I see them in a movie. All the movies are not that, they're not that kind of, it's a different kind of satisfaction and it's extremely uh, emotional. This guy's lack of love is as interesting and valid and emotional as other people's great look how much I love everybody thinks. I don't have this, uh, I don't impose this goal on movies. We're going to reveal something new about the character or some, or, or he's going to uh, learn. It's th- not when it's this specific kind of character that is relentlessly one thing. I was so excited when it started. I was so impressed and I, and I enjoyed so much the investment of, this guy in a hole it's just so i've just never seen anything set up that way so perfectly without language with no no words a man in a hole 
and making this investment in his own future and in and and it, like an animal. He's like an That's animal, true. and that a character is an animal. You could talk about that hole for as long as it was filmed, and just uh, he's alone in a hole. He's a billionaire, but he still goes to this hole. I get the sense that he and you see throughout the movie that he continues to get full of oil and he continues to buy his own property from the from the local realtor he does everything by himself uh completely independent person and what this leads to is a total decay of his spirit that he to have somebody he wants to exist in his somebody doesn't want to make it and he doesn't want to give it to a, a woman he doesn't want to share it with a woman in order to give it to his son he wants a orphan son that's not even his blood uh, so that he can carry. It's like he wants to clone himself almost. <laughs> he wants his brother because he wants someone he can trust implicitly. But just the way it felt and like the way the, there are so many movies that are period movies that look like a bunch of people walking around in 2020 in stupid clothes <laughs> and they overuse tracking camp. They use helicopter shots of battle scenes from the civil war. And I just go, Where'd they get the helicopter? Like, I can't believe it. It's an illusion. It's a trick. Yes, but, yes. Uh, but this movie is, uh, is stripped bare, and I <laughs> really believe where I am. And as soon as it started with, like Joe saying, the music and the cinematography and the acting, I was like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm here. I'm willing. You could just fucking abuse me. I don't give a shit. I love this so much. And it never let me down. Anytime that the chocolate going down my throat got too rich, it would ease up and there'd be like cream and, and ice water. It just got better and better. I hate to talk, talk about it this way, but it's true. It got better and better. And then I start wondering what's going to happen to these people. Unchangeable. What happens is the world around him decays and devolves until this kid who he gave this life to comes back deaf saying, I don't want any of this from you. I don't. I just want you to know. I don't that you're nothing to me now. Uh, although he's asking him for money to be, right, right, an oil right. magnate. Like it's and so uh, when and and look, the guy's a child. He's a giant weird child. Well, he doesn't change at all. The thing about yeah. him is his unchanging. Yes. and it's what happens to a person who never changes. He ends up with more. I mean, the way that that play, look. There's no accidents in film design and production design. You look at the castle he's living in and the depth, the richness of the fucking wood and the, the, the desk he sits at and his office and the, the mannerism of his, of his servant. And he's, and he's a husk. He's just from all those years of no nourishment to his soul. He's uh, he's he just casually kills a guy. This is the, this is where I disagree with you. Yeah. I don't see it as a cerebral victory with an emotional uh, lack of emotion. You I think the there's a there's a spectrum of emotions that you're neglecting, and part of it is because you're a young fella and you haven't learned to appreciate these. And that's why Paul Thomas Anderson has come to them later in his filmmaking too. One of the never going to cede a second of territory to somebody who's a wild card, who's the opposite sex, uh, um, who brings out desire in him. Any of that. Just- well, and also, if you compare his uh, uh, purest idea of like putting all of you everything into your business against being with a bunch of whores in a in a tavern, <laughs> like like in other words, it's it's not for it's not like the thing he's not taking part in is so great either in a sense. Like neither yeah. of them, him or his brother, uh, are or Paul Dano, are after love or real human contact. Right. They're all greedy fucks, and they're all. Uh, confused. I mean, to me, the thing, one thing I, 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 I'm haunted by with that movie, and by haunted, I mean something I can't resolve, so I think about it a lot, is when his son gets uh, uh, injured and there, uh, first there's the obvious display of who he is by that he, he works all night to cap the well before he goes near his kid. But when he does, he's um, holding his kid. If you look at it, it's exactly the same pose as John Lennon naked with Yoko Ono when he's got his leg, he's got his leg over him and he's holding him like this, laying on his side, uh, kissing him. And, and there's so much uh, love and affection in that moment. And it's very confusing. It's very, uh, I don't know everything about what it means. I really don't. But again, I, that I attribute to 
honest. That's honest filmmaking. It's and, almost and like the feeling more than a movie that has a, a clear bells. Like when I used to go to church as a kid and they once in a while, they ring a bell. And I asked my mother, why do they keep doing that? She goes, they just want you to pay attention to this one part. They're like, listen, this part's important. <laughs> and so there's a lot of movies that do that. Well, I, don't, I don't even well, know if it's love. I don't know. And I don't think he's a sociopath. Or I don't think he is. I know what you mean. I mean, he's a little young. He's a little young for the So part. young, yeah. Like, but in those days, actually, that made me feel more transported to that really? time. Because people didn't act like they do now. Mm-hmm. People certainly didn't show their... The th- Christianity has a st- really strange place in American history because essentially there's been people who have been acting insane throughout American history. Right, right. Being praised and paid for it. Like right. uh, 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 speaking in tongues and all kinds of, we have this weird part of our, our legitimate history. Like U.S. presidents going way back have like posed and shook hands with guys who have literally healed people. Right. And spoken in tongues. It's insane that we're right. that close to something that's like like a, a very esoteric behavior. So I think it was well shown in that. I think Paul Thomas Anderson sometimes lets, I mean, Jesus, the fucking, the fucking discipline of Daniel Day-Lewis's performance and even the kid um, against Paul Dano, who I think he just kind of let him off the leash and said, you do whatever you want. Right. I, I might have said... Uh, bring it down a little but then it wouldn't have been i mean it was, it's an insane movie the movie's not the movie's also not a period piece about oil it's no, a fucking yeah. dream it's a sick dream it's right. i don't know where the fuck he got this story what made him sit down and write it the way he did and film it the way he did but he the thing that i get really excited about is somebody who makes a dream like movie uh but knows exactly what he's doing that doesn't right. just throw mud against the wall. Goes like this is what it has to sound like. This is what the colors. This is what the oil, the black smoke looks like against the sky. This right. is we're gonna be the, the colors in this movie are gonna be black, navy blue, uh, and tan. And that's there's not gonna be any other colors in the whole movie. And this is what the music is gonna sound like. And this is what his mustache is gonna look like. And 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 what he looks like when he uh, when he's pissed off and with a drink in his hand. That's it. Discipline in a dreamlike movie right. is a great combination. I think he does that. That and, movie uh, is so gorgeous, and every scene has its own game to it. Every scene is its own movie. Yeah, and like sure. the, the 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 scene where he, with the motorcycle in the middle of the desert. What the fuck are we doing there? And I don't know. Look, some the thing with movies like this is sometimes they get you and you're on board, and and when they don't. Fuck this. But I don't think it's an allegory. I don't think it has an extrapolatable uh, meaning to the rest of the world. It's just a, what if you took this fucked up? I mean, I don't know how he came, came up with this story. Like he, he wrote the, ma- he just wrote the master, a sick, uh, beautifully realized fantasy of a filmmaker who gets into some kind of a fever when he writes a movie and then executes it with extreme uh, uh, conscientious discipline. I don't think it's trying to say anything. I think it's laying a lot of human uh, observation end to end, and it's creating some fantasy. It's to me, it's not about homoerotic. It's about sex, sexual. They are confused about the difference between friendship, love, and sex, and fatherhood, and all these things. They put them all into each other, right. and they're just linked in a way that they can't be pulled apart from each other. It's like a love affair between a block of ice and a, a hyena. It's like, yes. why are they connected? But saying homoerotic is like saying there's chemistry between a man and a woman in a movie. It's, it's, it's insignificant. I mean, the movie is a fucking mess of uh, energy and feeling and uh, love and deranged uh, sadism. And <laughs> uh, I mean, the guy's ma- making gasoline potions and poisoning people. It's fucking insane. I've never seen anything like it. That movie is it's mystifying. I, I love it. I love it. But when he's, we're this close on a fucking anamorphic fucking, you know, lens, beautiful shot of his face watching the guy take off on the motorcycle forever and ever and ever. And we're just watching his face change when he's realizing I should, uh, he's not coming back. It's <laughs> such a strange scene. And I was like this, like I couldn't, I, I that that movie just washed over me. 
basically L. Ron Hubbard on a ship, you know, his, his, which he did it. That was his life. He yeah. had a navy of crazy, and that they become pals. And then it just, everything just rattles until there's just the bolts are coming off, but it's serene. The movie's serene. It's slick. The yeah. movie's like a Calvin Klein at it's so beautifully shot. And Philip is incredible. And Joaquin is incredible in an opposite way. I mean, that's, I, I, I don't, I can't find that in an, in my yeah. brain or and i can't recognize it in anyone else's that's what sets pta apart for me I, no one movie. else was gonna make why the yeah. fuck did you make that movie when i saw phantom thread i thought paul thomas anderson is the best guy working right now he's at his at his best right now and he's the best one making films right now martin scorsese's a legendary untouchable filmmaker his films today aren't aren't at the caliber i don't think in terms of richness and the effort made um and the rawness and the honesty just such good fucking filmmaking sorry i'm taking too long to say what i think about it but yes no, that's great i had the that's same great. experience joe of fetishizing the the inside of his home in the in the country and the little car and his how disturbed he gets i it was funny as fuck to me how disturbed he gets and I remember one day I was shooting a, 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 my show on Fifth Avenue and we had a little white tent with some uh, with our, our uh, electronics and some shit under it. But we took up a little bit of the sidewalk and fucking Daniel Day-Lewis uh, walked by and he hit his head on our tent. And I was in awe of watching him walk by and he hit his head on the tent a little bit. And I said, I'm sorry, did you hit your head on that? And he, without looking back, he said, yes, I did. <laughs> like, oh, really and i was and i was like my god there's a little bit of him and i don't know him at all there's a little bit of him in these characters this when he's pissed off he's the funniest thing in movies he's like joe pesci level of an acid it, it makes me laugh so much throughout phantom thread i'm just delighted it's very funny yeah his how is he is by anybody who isn't his sister, <laughs> or a client, or a dress. Everybody else needs to go fuck themselves. And yes, that this woman, by killing him a little bit every day, is able to hang on to him. Is that's also the, every human relationship, every human, every uh, loving together two people relationship has a little bit of Munchausen yeah. uh, and a little bit of this crazy manipulation of one person who's such a white hot heat that the other person needs to cool them down and then let them grow and then cool them down. It's, it, it's, it, it's, a uh, it's beautifully done. I, I feel like, uh, that's that attention to detail and that willingness to really give in to the world that the movie lives in. What, what is this making clothes thing? And what is it at this level? And what kind of a guy is this guy? What makes him great at this? And, uh, we're going to sit there and really fetishize that. Right. The, 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 you, you start to get off on the on the on the clothes and the way that all, everything that gets him off, and you watch and the way he looks at her and his his command of his client and his respect of his client and his home and his sister, who's a lot like there will be blood. The guy that hangs out with him yeah. is his partner. If you didn't, if you never replaced what your mother did for right. you, I mean, right. uh, then you'll always uh, pine for her. I mean, uh, you never replace what. When your mother dies, uh, you guys both still have your moms, I think. My mom died a couple of years ago. And the thing that you face is that when your mother dies, because it usually, I mean, look, when people lose their moms early in life, it's a whole other experience I, have, mm -hmm. I didn't have. But I lost my mom in my 50s. And like my mom said, that's appropriate. Like when I said to her, I don't want you to die. She said, that's the way, that's, that's the way it works. We're going right. in order. And this is the age you're, you, you're losing me at a, a pretty average age. That, but what you the thing that goes with your mom is the realization you'll never get this kind of support again, and you don't have it coming any longer. It's it's now your job to offer it to other people. That's a big thing. But when you lose your mom, if you don't fill your life, you only are able to handle that if you find other sources of love, or if you you know. Uh, so this guy was a slave to his art, so that's why losing his mom was such a devastating thing. But this is his one hopeful movie if all these other movies are a search for connection this one if, the, if, it. if the master is two with the same people only finding each other 
if uh, there will be blood is a, a man steadfastly refusing love and what happens to a man like that. This movie is, is there. All these movies are about crazy people. What? They're all about madness. And I mean, the old country for old men is a whole other subject. It's about be, being a man and all kinds of other shit, but and aging. But this movie is like, this guy found a way. And it's true that if you're going to love somebody and have them be a, a real part of your life, you need to let them kill you a little. You need to let them take, you need to give something in return. And they, they need to take, take your, the, a person who's, there will be bloodish in life, just exploding with uh, ability and, and gain and success is alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this incredible artist in the Phantom Thread has this woman who needs to, and, but also he, she has this great shining thing in her and he, he douses her a little bit because he takes her out of the, she was this blooming rose in the world and he takes her in, into the shade with him into this dark world. So she's giving up a lot too. It's a, it's an interesting partnership and it, and it is true. You're not going to, you're not going to find somebody without giving up some of what you value a romance a new romance a honeymoon period is something that makes you feel i'll never be lonely again that's the feeling you have this is candy this is like a fairy tale and it'll never be anything else and then you find out oh no i'm terribly lonely even though this is the right person for me i'm t- still lonely how do we maintain this now that that's reality right. has come back at first art is a way to keep away the shitty feelings to feel good about yourself and to um and to to as a defense uh, mm-hmm. the thing that that when you watch an artist sustain is when they're able to take uh their dedication to their art past the point of romance when you lose the when you lose the honeymoon with mm-hmm. your art and it just it becomes a fucking business partner instead of like a real marriage and then you're doing it because you're doing it because you believe in it and it, and you're doing it when you in a way that isn't just like, ooh, how this makes me feel. You'll go the rest of your life having these conversations where you go like, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Marriage doesn't work. And anybody who's doing it is faking it or, you know, whatever. The thing that I love about this movie, again, and with his whole uh, trajectory in his career, is that you couldn't have two more different movies than Hard Eight and uh, Fan. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't have two more different movies. Two different textures. There's just so much that they don't have in common. Bunch of losers in Vegas uh, trying to get a little something out of life. And then the Phantom Thread. But if you watch the, him go, it's kind of like you can't ask for any more different language than English and Russian. But if you walk from England through, right. uh, you know, uh, across the continent, you'll gradually get there from French to Belgian to German to, you know, uh, Finnish to whatever. Uh it's so clear the 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 walking from one from uh, hard eight to phantom thread it makes perfect sense they're all connected they're all the same guy and he he uh when he he gives himself completely though to the next thing he really takes the next step he doesn't use reuse old tricks which you know like spielberg is I think a master filmmaker. Not every film he's made has been great, and he's had neat, and he likes to work more than some people do. So he just makes more movies, but he has tricks, and I enjoy them. He has a bunch of things he does in every single movie. He does all the same shit. This guy doesn't do that. <laughs>